College Success Arizona presents student stories. The feature of the following story and interview is Adrian Valdivinos. I was born in Phoenix. I was raised in Phoenix. So my entire life I've been in Phoenix. Where did you graduate from high school? I graduated at Gateway Early College High School. It's a small, it's a small high school on a college campus, on a community college campus. What is your current age? My current age is 19 years old. And where are you attending school? I'm attending school at Arizona State University. And what is your course of study? Uh, right now I'm studying electrical engineering and I'm trying to also get a, a minor in business. Ultimately, what are you hoping to do as a job, as a career? Um, ultimately, go out on my own, uh, start working on my own things, become an entrepreneur in a way that I could work on something on the technological and be able to build stuff that's not really what you would find on the market. Something on something completely outside of the realm of like what you would find at Intel, what you would find at Microsoft. Something that's not industrialized and a little bit more creative. Kind of like how Google allows their employees to be more creative in their workspace, something like that. So you're pursuing your degree, your education in electrical engineering, correct? What type of thing, like if you just sit here and you sort of envision yourself creating or inventing something, can you give us kind of an example of what it might be in terms of like a, a new telephone or, or, or like a smartphone or what it might be? Um, honestly, ever since I was a kid, I was always interested in magnets and how they could pull objects that were of the same, that were metal from a distance. And um, I always thought that would be a useful concept coming into the future with you know, flying cars, magnetism. It's just so much that has yet to be discovered that could be put into into things that we can't even imagine yet because nobody's thought of them. And with a creative space, I feel like leaving your day-to-day nine-to-five job, um, you don't get that kind of creativity and you don't get that kind of expression of yourself, of your ideas. And you kind of lose it as you grow older because, I mean, you're just stuck in a workplace and to allow that creativity to become our future technology is something that I think is important. I think you're right. And what you just said about the whole, you know, creative energy kind of being lost if you're in a cubicle or very structured environment, that is very true. Yeah. The So in a, in a short statement, you want to be an inventor of sorts. Yeah. And, and use that as a business. Have you had this instinct or this passion, this idea you said your whole life since a very young age? Yeah, I've always had it. I've always like wanted to go out and build my own things, tinker with stuff, break stuff apart. That's why I honestly did engineering because it was the closest thing I could find to any of it. Do you think you could end up maybe working with or for a Google or Amazon or somebody like that who they kind of encourage that thing where, you, you know, be entrepreneurial, think of the next big thing because it makes them money, it makes you money, it makes everybody money? Yeah, I definitely want to at least start working with them in a way or collaborate with them. That would be, well, you need to start somewhere, and that would definitely be a place that I want to start. Very interesting stuff, my friend. Talk about college. Is Are you finding college to be uh, ASU, to be compatible with that creative entrepreneurial energy and spirit that you have? Yeah, ASU, um, it offers a lot, a lot of programs on campus, um, especially this one place called The Tech Shop, which was gold when I found it. I just haven't really gone back because I've been busy, but it's basically a, a space where you could create things. Um, they give you the machines to build, 3D print, um, laser cut, anything. And you could go there and use your imagination and do whatever you want, as long as you pay for it, obviously. But it, the membership comes free, and the membership's about $1,000. So ASU, ASU gives a lot of resources to its students. So I think that's been helpful. And you're part of a professional organization. The acronym is SHIP. Can you tell us what that yeah. is? Society of Hispanic Professional Engineers. It's mainly to develop Hispanic students, not necessarily just Hispanic students, but students in engineering in general, to basically make them prepared for the professional realm of what they're getting into. So helping them find internships, helping them network with other engineers, helping them socialize with other engineers so that they know what's going on and they know what to look forward to or to get prepared to be prepared for when it comes time for them to have their own internship and you're also part of a fraternity on the asu campus can you talk about that yeah sigma lambda beta is a multicultural fraternity a lot of what we do is kind of exposing the multicultural part of it we create events 
this year we created one called or for LinkedIn to allow students in Greek life and other students in general to realize like what professionalism is and how LinkedIn could be used in their future, especially in their careers. And even some students didn't realize that in their degrees, like nursing, that it could be helpful. So that was one of the events we've thrown. And then we do a lot of volunteer work on the weekends. So Saturday mornings, we even clean up middle lab once a month. Has the fraternity helped you to not just network, but make new friends and also maybe volunteer or serve in some capacity? Yeah, it, it definitely helped me meet a lot of people. Every state that I go to that we have a chapter, I get to meet the brothers there. They they house us, they feed us, they they basically treat us like family. And even when I'm going to Seattle with CHIP, the national conference, I'm staying at one of their houses for free. So it, it really works out. And they really help with connections. And like I said, the community service, we do it. We, we have to do mandatory 20 hours a semester. Can you talk about the role that your family has had in you attending college so far as encouraging you? Yeah, so I mean, the biggest role my family has, I would say, is my parents came from Mexico. They didn't have the opportunity to go to college. And my older brothers were also from Mexico. They came to the United States with my parents about 20 years ago. Uh, my older brothers both tried going to a community college, but some legislation passed that out-of-state students, or that undocumented students, which my brothers were, and they're now on DACA, but undocumented students could have to pay out-of-state tuition, so my brothers could no longer afford going to a community college, and that was just heartbreaking, because I was still in high school. I was barely getting into high school when all of this happened, and I just realized the social impact of all of it. And when I realized what college really was and how I was able to graduate with an associate through a high school program, I didn't realize much until I realized what happened to my brothers. I didn't realize that I was so gift not gifted, but I was given an opportunity that they weren't, and that honestly motivated me to do what I to do what I'm doing basically, and finishing my degree, staying on track with all my classes. Good for you. And College Success Arizona provides uh, students such as yourself, over a thousand students now in the last decade or so, uh, a scholarship which provides, pays up to $6,000 per year for educational expenses. And also the organization provides a a success advisor, an academic advisor. In your case, it's Robert Davis. Can you talk about Robert's role in your life? Yeah, he's been amazing. Um, honestly, he's been so understanding about everything that I've gone through in college, even the bad, the struggles, like getting used to the college, especially university life, compared to the community college life. Because my my initial thought was going into university, it would be similar to the community college, and it would be easy. And this was like the first time I actually tackled real science-based classes that were with students that were all top of their class. They were all straight-A students in high school, they were basically the cream of the crop, and you're just another, to start with, you're just another student going in who had a 4.0 in high school, and now you're competing with all the other students who did the exact same things as you. And it was just like a complete change, because college just got a lot harder when I, when I started, and I didn't realize it was so different. And Robert was just there telling me, like, he experienced the same thing, he knew what I was going through, um, he could relate, and not only that, like, even if I struggled in the class, he wasn't judgmental about it. He knew that what, what it was like. He knew what college was could do and what it, how it could benefit. So he kind of guided me through a lot, and he's been awesome because of that. Can you also talk about the financial aspect of the scholarship, the $6,000 per year for educational expenses, how that has helped you? Oh, it's helped me a lot. Honestly, if it weren't for the scholarship, I would be in debt. That was the last key. That that solidified everything. The moment that I realized that I got the scholarship, everything became so much easier in a way that I didn't have to stress about working so much, and I didn't have to stress about payments and loans and any of that. The moment the scholarship, the moment that I realized that I got it, um, I was it was a big relief because it covered exactly what I needed for everything to be paid. Can you provide some advice to middle and high school students who may be listening to this and who may be considering their own college career? Um, yeah, high school high school is one thing. You learn a lot. You socialize with a lot of people. But the moment that you get to 
a university campus, especially like ASU, with 80,000 students, it's a lot. It's a, it's a bigger world. And um, I would say if you think you're doing really well in your classes, just bring those habits onto um, to when you go into a university because some classes in high school you can pass without studying. You don't have to study much or you might be just really good at what you're doing. But the moment that you step into a university, everything changes. You're no longer in a class of just 30 students. You're in a class of 100. And you just got to be be able to adapt to that. And you got to make sure that you adapt to that because if you don't, you could fall behind easily. Thank you, Adrian, for the interview and for working so hard to make a difference in our community.